O'Brien. What's going on, folks? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We had a kind of freaky week, uh, but we're closing out on somewhat of a strong note in certain equities. It's been nuts for Tesla, Meta, Microsoft. A little bit weird for NVIDIA, which we can talk about. Um, gold's obviously moving up. I mean, kind of, kind of nice. And then copper, man, copper up 3%. At least the contract of 3% today alone. Uh, we have the E mini up about 0.52%, uh, SPY 0.54%, the Russell Futures down 0.57%, uh, the NQ is up about 1%, while the comp is up 0.88, and the Dow Futures uh, are roughly equal to the uh, Dow itself. Let's look. So, yeah, we're looking at, okay, so we had a good, you know, Jobless reports, right? This is kind of and what you're seeing in the media is is a big push now uh, for for cuts in September. Okay, so you have gold going up on that at 1.29 percent. Same with some of the other metals. Uh, silver always moving extreme compared to that move in gold, uh, trading right near that 32 level again. Uh, the high of the year at least 32.75 in that. Tesla up 1.35 percent. Let's just talk about it a little bit uh, because. <laughs> I mean, you've seen like what, like a nearly 40% move. It's, it is unbelievable. And this is like a new axiom in trading is just don't bet against Tesla. And then you had Musk come out and uh, say he's going to like ruin Gates um, for shorting the stock. It's insane. But I mean, look, you know, this is in April. We're trading at 138.80. We come up, I mean, we were doing nothing for months. And you had this move up, uh, let's just say, you know, around 180 level. We're trading back right at two. 50, which is insane. 30% um, rally over the past seven sessions, nearly 40% rise in the last month itself. Obviously, I was talking about, I don't see what the point of it was before the, the earnings came out, or at least before the numbers came out with their delivery. Uh, and then, of course, one of the big things everyone was talking about was their energy sector. Okay, so some of the big numbers from this in the second quarter, they produced approximately 411,000 vehicles and delivered 440,000. It'd be interesting to see, interested to see how that structure plays out. So, you know, they're delivering, uh, obviously, extra that they had, right? And they're producing less than they delivered. Um, it'd be super interested to see how that is kind of going to be expanded out over the next quarter. Uh, the second quarter total delivery figure is higher than the 386,810 vehicles globally delivered in the first quarter, but lower than the approximate 466,140. So you you know, you're still seeing a contraction a little bit in EV, but I'm, I'm also seeing, you know, numbers from like GM and, and Ford that uh, the EVs are cooking in a sense. You know, it's it's pretty interesting. And it's getting me hyped a little bit for Rivian in a way. So, go to Rivian. Obviously, they had a deal. They got a bunch of money uh, in, in both stock uh, purchasing and just cash from Volkswagen. And they're going to work together. Uh, on, uh, how do you call it, software for the car. It, I'm a little concerned of that in the sense that I, I think it's cool that Rivian gets this money to work on this, but do they lose a certain edge because now they're going to be sharing this tech with Volkswagen, uh, and are they spending, or are they at least taking on a lot of the research and development of the software as well, um, be interested to see how that pulls out. It did move up a little bit on some rumor that they were going to start producing vehicles uh, in tandem with Volkswagen at, at one of Volkswagen's plants, but the CEO came out and said that that's not true. Trading at fourteen sixty nine in this stock, uh, you know, big move to the upside. I, I want to, I, I want this company to succeed. I think their cars are awesome. I, I think they are unique enough. Uh, but but also not as experimental as maybe, let's say, the Cybertruck or something like that, right? Um, I think they look amazing. If you're someone who likes Range Rovers or Land Rovers, this is no doubt. And you, you want to get into EVs, you're, you're going to go with a Rivian. I cannot find a negative review about these guys from people who have purchased the car. They love them. It's comfortable. I think they look slick. They're trying to get to a price point that's more affordable at some certain point, uh, the R2. So we'll, we'll see if that can be achieved. Um, but regardless, I'm, I'm interested to see how this goes forward. Uh, they, they did smash on deliveries as well, which is very nice. I think they're just not profitable yet. Um, but, you know, this is a fresh startup from a few years ago.
trying to push out these cars. And they're doing an okay job now. I'm, again, just concerned. Do, do they lose, you know, edge by developing software um, with Volkswagen? This remains to be seen. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, man, crushing at least an EV. Uh, had something as well for GM and, and Ford, but I'll have to look for that uh, during the break to go through it. But the, the point is, uh, here we go. Yeah, so electric pickups and SUVs are powering up GM and Ford's EV progress, which is huge. In the second quarter, GM delivered 696,000 cars. That's a 0.6% year-over-year increase and the highest since the fourth quarter of 2020. GM reported record EV sales that grew 40% year-over-year to 21,930, boosted by a jump in deliveries of the Cadillac Lyric. Uh, EVs still made up only, excuse me, still made only 3.2% of its total second quarter results. Full-size pickups up nearly 230,000, 6% year-over-year increase. Let's see here. And they didn't comply. Okay, that's just for GM. And still, Ford, similarly, right? EVs made 3.5% of its total volume. 166,448 electric. Anyways, the point is, is I think, you know, we were seeing this pullback with EVs. Um, which I think we'll still have to some certain point, but EVs are getting cheaper. Obviously, China has recovered a little bit, and I think that does drive sales. Maybe not for Rivian, Ford, and GM, but certainly Tesla as well. Um, and, and we still have capital flowing in to develop things for EV. Uh, so it's pretty neat. I like Rivian. I, I don't know if I would take a position in this right now. Like, I'm talking for myself. Um, I, I do think of the long term, these guys will be successful. It just remains to be seen, like, what the path for that is, but I am seeing more and more Rivians on the road, which is a positive. And I mean, you know, tried and true, if, if the people like the vehicle, more people are gonna buy it, which I think is, uh, I think it's a good thing going for Rivian as well. I just don't see a lot of ads for them. And I, I don't know, you know, in the case of like Tesla, the, the, the way that Musk was really marketing it, it's like, you know, you got your crypto bros, your tech bros, this is the new, wave for things right it had a little bit of an experimental look um and so that was a segment they were hitting gm and ford hit it because they're gm and ford so what does rivian do to set themselves apart and i'm, I'm still waiting to see at least from the marketing component because it's so important what they do uh, folks stay tuned we'll be right back